Um, good evening. I'm Amanda Holliday, and I'm an upper elementary and junior high math teacher here at LaPorte. As Lindsay mentioned, we're going to give you a peek inside of our classrooms. But before I give you a peek inside the math classroom, I want to indicate how at LaPorte, we go deeper in our approach than what you'll find in other programs. We're focused on much more than merely learning how to solve problems with decimals or how to factor algebraic equations. We teach them all those things, all of the content they need in order to place into high school advanced classes. But we don't stop there. I'll just give you one example. One major goal of our curriculum is to develop in our students an intuitive comfort with the world of numbers around them. You know how some people say, I've always been a mathematical thinker or I've just never been very good at math. Our goal is to make every one of our students feel first, not second. We want them to experience working with numbers as natural and easy. Imagine I ask you the question, how many electrical sockets do you think there are in the United States? Think about that question. Think about how some people would actually be naturally comfortable answering this question, and others would not be. Here's another question. What does it mean to say that our national debt in 2011 was 14 trillion? How many millions is that? How many thousands? Do you have an immediate sense of how big or how small that number is? What if I said that 40, I'm sorry, 4% of a one trillion national budget was spent on education in 2011? Would you have a sense of how much money that is? What if I made a mistake and I said 14 billion instead of 14 trillion? Would your spidey sense tell you, wait, that can't be right? This is, kind of, this is the kind of number sense that we aim to develop in all of our students. We want the world of numbers, real actual numbers out there, to be a familiar place for them so that their explicit study of math is grounded in the ability to intuitively make comparisons weigh factors, to judge differences. Developing this implicit sense of numbers is what enables our math program to do more than just teach the rules of math. We help, our or help your children become critical, precise, and logical thinkers who are capable of reasoning through complex problems, including, including problems that involve mere, uh, more than merely number crunching. If you're trying to decide what college is best, what career to pursue, how to deal with relationships. <clears throat> These are all complicated things that require the ability to think rigorously. By focusing on understanding and applying these skills they learn, our math program gives your children the training needed to reason step by step through not only math problems on paper, but through these types of complex problems in all areas of life. <clears throat> so I'd like to take you into the classroom now and introduce you to a typical word problem that students would complete in the sixth grade. John and Rick have 900 stamps all together. After John used two-sevenths of his stamps and Rick used 180 of his stamps, they had the same number of stamps left. How many total stamps did they have left? So I'm going to put you to work. You had a piece of paper um, and a pencil or pen. We don't like to use pens normally in math class but I'll go ahead and let you for now because I ran out of pencils. Go ahead and see if you can work on this problem on your own, and I will let you work with a partner if you'd like to ask your neighbor. All right, are you ready for me to tell you the answer? Since we are crunched for time, I may not be able to let you satisfyingly finish solving this problem, but I am very curious about the processes each of you took to begin, or maybe how, what was that feeling that you maybe got when you saw this and were actually asked to do this problem? Um, so how many of you guys panicked? when you saw this. I'm just curious. And it's OK. I know there's sometimes a certain feeling that you get in math um, when you see problems like this. How many of you guys like the challenge? And you get a sense of um, pleasure when you're actually presented with math problems. Cool. Um, some math programs teach strategies that include step-by-step -step procedures that are supposed to help students systematically solve supposedly any word problem. They box important numbers. They underline keywords that tell you maybe what's going on with the numbers in the problem. Um, but somehow, you're supposed to come up with the correct steps in order to solve any complicated problem like this one. Um, but the problem is, these types of methods are very formula formulaic and based on pattern recognition. But they don't help students develop a deep understanding and comfort with numbers. Some math programs encourage students to draw a picture of the situation. <laughs> students end up drawing stick figures on their paper 
doing the things that are happening in the picture. And they may include the actual numbers and maybe what's happening with the numbers. They use them, so they throw them away. I don't know. But um, these strategies, they're an attempt to make word problems concrete to students. But unfortunately, they're not the correct tools that they need in order to really help students feel like they know how to actually solve many different math situations. This is what I need to breathe. <laughs> okay, I get really excited. Um, I'm also curious, how many of you guys chose to use algebra maybe to solve this? Yeah? Actually, when I gave this problem to my husband, um, he actually started setting up these systems of algebraic <laughs> equations, which is really great. Um, and this is absolutely a correct way to solve this problem, actually. It's also an efficient way to solve this problem. And we want students to actually solve this problem eventually using algebra later down the road. Absolutely. I actually teach um, pre-algebra and algebra to students um, here at Laporte. And by that point, students are actually using algebra to solve these problems. But keep in mind, our sixth graders comfortably solve this problem without using algebra. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how our sixth graders solve this problem. Can someone actually read this again? Because we're supposed to read the problem one more time to make sure that we read through the problem. And then we'll start. <laughs> and I'm just, I need to catch my breath. So Sarah, will you read this out loud? Nice and loud for us. John and Rick have 900 stamps all together. After John used two sevenths of his stamps and Rick used 180 of his stamps, they had the same number of stamps left. Okay. How many total stamps do they have left? Perfect. So the first question we ask ourselves is, what is the question asking us to find? So we go ahead and underline the question. And we write our answer. Um, in a complete sentence with a blank where our answer is going to go in the end. Then we ask ourselves, who or what is this problem about? Who or what is this problem about? John and Rick Stamps, right? So we go ahead and write this vertically along our working space. Because what we're doing is we're going to um, represent this situation using a visual, um, a visual diagram. So I'm going to show you how this goes. Then we ask ourselves, what's the first set of information that we know about John and Rick Stamps? They have 900 stamps all together. So all in all, when I have my whole visual representation, I'm going to know that all together they have 900 stamps. The second set of information that we know is after John used 2 sevenths of his stamps. So if he, if he used 2 sevenths of his stamps, if I represent all of his stamps using this unit bar, what if I divided it into seven equal parts? How many of those equal parts did he use? Two sevenths, right? So he has two sevenths that he used, and the remaining five equal parts are how many he has left. Hmm. Now, continuing on, it says Rick used 180 of his stamps. They had the same number of stamps left, or and after that, they had the same number of stamps left. So if Rick had the same number of stamps left as John, we go ahead and write and duplicate that part of the graph, or that part of our diagram, right? That would make sense. However, he also had 180 stamps on top of what he had left, right? So if he got rid of it, to begin with, he had what he had left and 180 stamps, right? So here we go. So now what I want you to see is I actually have a visual representation of my whole math problem. Now it's just a matter of doing some mathematical calculations in order to figure out my answer. Well, let's go ahead and begin. If Rick used... 180 stamps, doesn't that affect the total number of stamps that they had at the beginning? So if I took it away from the total amount, let's go ahead and subtract. 900 minus the 180 stamps that he used, I'm left with 720 stamps for the remaining 12 equal parts. Uh-oh, looks like division's coming. Because if I take a look at the 720 stamps that I have, with 12 equal parts, if I divide those out, that means I have 60 stamps in each of my equal pieces. So now it's just a matter of looking back at the question and asking yourself, how many total stamps do they have left? Well, it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal groups of 60 are the total amount that John and Rick had together. So 60 times 10 gives me 600 stamps left. John and Rick, therefore, have a total of 600 stamps left. <coughs> Pretty cool, huh? I'm getting really excited. So as you can see, we're teaching students more than how to solve problems with fractions. 
Here at LaPorte, students have a deeper understanding of math concepts and are able to apply their understanding to very complex situations as they are able to represent quantities and mathematical situations visually, breaking down problems into understandable and achievable steps. Your students will leave our math program feeling excited about math, feeling comfortable with numbers, and feeling confident in their ability to solve problems, confident in their own minds. After you leave tonight, I would encourage each of you to also take a look at our website um, to look into other components that actually make our math program here at LaPorte really, really special. This is just one, so thank you.